continuing with the series of giving you video lectures on all the important topics of Punjab history and culture, today I bring before you Buddhism. Now, जब भी हम बुद्धिज्म टॉपिक करते हैं जो सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन है एंड मोस्ट फ्रीक्वेंटली आस्क्ड क्वेश्चन इन द यूनिवर्सिटीज है दैट इज डिस्कस इन डिटेल लाइफ एंड टीचिंग्स ऑफ गौतम बुद्ध राइट सो दिस इज व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू कवर इन दिस वीडियो सो व्हाट आर वी गोइंग टू डिस्कस देखो पहला मैं बताऊंगी कि व्हाई व्हाट वर द रीजंस फॉर द ओरिजिन ऑफ बुद्धिज्म देन वील टॉक अबाउट के गौतम बुद्ध का असली नाम क्या था क्या उनका नाम सिद्धार्थ था तो सिद्धार्थ से गौतम उनका नाम कैसे पड़ा राइट इफ ही वॉज अ प्रिंस ही वॉज देन हाउ कम ही बिकेम अ सेंट एंड हाउ डिड ही एंड वाई डिड ही स्टार्ट अ न्यू रिलीजन बुद्धिज्म एंड मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट हिज टीचिंग्स सो लेट्स बिगेन विद दिस टॉपिक नाउ द वेरी फर्स्ट थिंग इज आई वॉन्ट टू टेल यू दैट ये जो टाइम पीरियड है दैट इज द सिक्स सेंचुरी बी सी दिस इज ऑल्सो नोन एज द पीरियड ऑफ ग्रेट रिलीजियस फर्मेंट क्योंकि यहाँ पर महात्मा बुद्ध या महावीर की जब हम बात करते हैं तो लॉर्ड महावीर गौतम बुद्ध दे दे वर द प्रोटेस्टेंट्स राइट नाउ एंड दे प्रोटेस्टेड अगेंस्ट द प्रिवेलिंग रिलीजियस सिचुएशंस राइट और ये कोई पहला नहीं था इनसे पहले जो है ग्रीस में ईरान में चाइना में दे वर प्रोटेस्ट अगेंस्ट द सुपरस्टेशंस इन द रिलीजन और अगेंस्ट द वेरियस डॉगमास ट्रेडिशंस इन द रिलीजन लाइक इन ईरान देर इज जोरास्टरिज्म इन चाइना देर इज कॉन्फ्यूस इन ग्रीस देर इज हरकलेटिस सो ऑल दीज प्रोटेस्ट मूवमेंट्स वर्क गोइंग इन द वर्ल्ड एंड इन इंडिया द सेम रोल वॉज प्लेड बाय महात्मा बुद्ध एंड महावीर वर्धमान राइट सो नाउ लेट्स answer let me answer your second question which i told you ke causes of the origin of buddhism right now these can also be termed as the causes of the origin of jainism now if i may have my pointer uh, just hold on okay now the first the very first point is that the vedic religion you know that i we had uh, i had talked about you in the early vedic uh, period it had lots its original purity and degenerated into cumbersome and meaningless ritual number 2 the priestly class had dominated the religion देखो जब हम अर्ली वेदिक पीरियड की बात करते हैं आई टोल्ड यू दैट यज्ञ को बी परफॉर्म बाय द हेड ऑफ द फैमिली बाय द ग्रहपतिज बट ग्रेजुअली द प्रीसली क्लास और द ब्राह्मण्स दे डोमिनेटेड द रिलीजन विदाउट देम नो यज्ञ को बी परफॉर्म्ड सो मे बी बुद्धिज्म अरोज अगेंस्ट द डोमिनेशन ऑफ द ब्राह्मण और द प्रीसली क्लास number 3 hinduism had become superstitious expensive it was difficult to understand fourth sanskrit was considered as the language of god it was considered to be a divine language but a common person or a common man did not understand a uh, fourth reason is the yagya yagnas and sacrifices became the part of the religion a uh, sixth is the caste system divided the society and the low caste people were deprived of the basic human rights so this was the scenario mahatma buddh lord mahavir they voiced against all the religious evils and put forward simple and practical teachings so very quickly what were the reasons which gave rise to buddhism and jainism one the vedic religion had lost its original purity number 2 the dominance of the priestly class number 3 hinduism had become come superstitious expensive then sanskrit which was the language was not as understandable or comprehensible to the common people yagyas and sacrifices became the essential part of the religion and the caste system where the low caste people were deprived of the human rights so mahatma bodh lord mahavir jo hai unhone in religious evils ke against jo hai awaaz uthai and they put forward simple and practical teaching right now the next part of this uh, question which is the life of gautam buddh right now whenever i talk about the life of gautam buddh one thing you have to understand that his real name was not gautam buddh but his real name was siddharth 
right? He was born at Lumbani in 567 BC. He was the only son of Sudodhan, the chief of Sakya clan of Kapilabastu. His mother's name was Maya. She was the princess of the neighboring clan of Kolya. Lekin ek baat hai, Mahavir, hum kahenge Siddharth ko janam dete hi, uske ek hafte ke baad jo hai, unki mrityu ho gi thi. So Siddharth was brought up by his masi or maternal mother Gautami. She was the younger sister of Maya. Shayad kahi na kahi Mahatma Buddha, historians feel that Mahatma Buddha got this name, uh, uh, Gautam, from the material uh, mother or the mother which brought, brought him up, right? Then about the childhood and uh, marriage. Now, because we know that Siddharth was born, uh, he was born as a prince. So obviously, you know, he was given all the comforts of life. And one more thing, that before the Mahatma Buddha, se pehle jo hai, Buddhism dharam prevalent nahi hai. So that means before this religion came into prominence, Siddharth was a Kshatriya. So being a Kshatriya, he Vedic literature. Padhaya gaya. But here he was not satisfied with this uh, literature. right? And at an age of 18, he was married to Yashodra. A son named as Rahul was born to him. It is said that Siddharth or the Gautam Buddha, jo hai, wo chote hote se hi, he, had, he, had, he was a kind-hearted and a spiritual bent of mind he had and he also was was a man of noble bearing. Now, there are these four scenes which transformed Gautam Buddha's life. It is said that once uh, he asked his charioteer Channa to take him around. And us duran jo hai unke zindagi mein char aise scenes aaye jinho ne unki life ko jo hai badal kar rakh diya. Pehla vyakti jo unho ne dekha ek Bridh ya ek buddha buzurg insan tha. The second person that he saw was a sick man. The third person he saw was a dead man. Now every time when he was looking at these people, he questioned the relevance of life. He felt ke wo zindagi mein jo hai, har koi jo hai buzurg bhi hoga. Koi na koi agar is life mein aya hai, to wo bimar bhi hoga. There will be pain in his life. Uh, and the ultimate reality of life is that he will die. And the fourth scene he saw was an aesthetic or a sadhu. And he felt the immense happiness on the face of this sadhu. So, ye char scene hai, the scene of the old man, a sick man, a dead man and an aesthetic which actually transformed his life. Right? Uh, maybe from here he understood that uh, he himself wanted to become an aesthetic or a sadhu. Now the picture here shows uh, the most important event in the life of Gautam Buddha and that is known as the Great Renunciation. Now the Great Renunciation kya tha? Uh, actually, Bache Gautam Buddha ke jo father hai, Sudhodan, unho ne sari efforts ki to make his son's life happy, but he could not do so, right? So, ek raat jo hai, uh, Siddharth uh, jo hai, he made up his mind that he will lead a life of an aesthetic, a sannyasi, a sadhu to know the reality or the truth, right? So, yaha ye picture mein you can see that he is just giving one last look at his wife and his son and it is here he left his home and kingdom in about 533 AD as a wandering monk in search of truth. And this event in the life of Buddha is known as the Great Renunciation. Right. Now something about his enlightenment. Now this map actually, this is not a part of your syllabi. We do in much detail uh, with the students of uh, history. Uh, this is actually, but now the present states of India, you say there is Tamil Nadu, there is Maharashtra, Punjab, Haryana. So these are the names of the ancient states. So the two most important names here are the Rajgriha and the Magad. Magad is the present day South Bihar. Right. So after leaving his uh, father's kingdom, Siddharth jo hai, he went to a forest near Raj Griha. Now this was also the capital of uh, Magad, and here he lived with his two famous teachers, Alara and Udarva. Yaha jo hai, bache, obviously uh, he was still not satisfied because he could not understand. Uh, he could not find 
हिज सर्च फॉर ट्रूथ ही वॉज नॉट सेटिस्फाइड तो कहते हैं यहाँ अगले छः साल जो है ही स्पेंट हिज टाइम इन दी जंगल्स ऑफ उर्वेला विदाउट टेकिंग एनी फूड यू नो इट इज हियर दैट ही टुक द हार्डेस्ट ऑफ दी पेनेंस अपनी बॉडी को जो है जितना ज़्यादा वो उसको जो है मुश्किल में रख सके दैट इज़ वाई बच्चे जब हम जब हम महात्मा बुद्ध के दो टीचिंग्स की बात करते हैं तो वो कहते हैं ही डज नॉट बिलीव इन दी हार्ड पेनेंस बिकॉज यहाँ वो छः साल तक ही डिड इज पेनेंस ही लिवड इन द जंगल एंड ही डिड नॉट टेक फूड फॉर मंथ्स ही इवन रिड्यूस्ड हिमसेल्फ टू जस्ट अ स्केलेटन बट यहाँ पर देर वॉज दिस गर्ल हु हैड कम अलॉन्ग विद इज विद हर शीप एंड हर नेम वॉज Sujata it is her who poured some milk in his mouth and here buddha did regain consciousness and here he decided to leave the path of the hard pedants so leaving the monks siddharth made his way to the banks of river niranjana near bodh gaya कहते हैं कि यहाँ पर ही सैट नियर दी पीपल ट्री वेर ही गॉट दी एनलाइटनमेंट एंड फाइनली रियलाइज द ट्रूथ ना दिस इवेंट is called as the great enlightenment or tath ghat that is he attained the truth so humne do cheeze ki hai great renunciation jab wo apni family ko kingdom ko chhod kar chale gaye the and great enlightenment when he got enlightened uh, on the bank of river niranjana near bodh gaya under the peepal tree now i this came across this very interesting question which was in uh, kbc and just look at the question and now i know that now since you are studying history you should be in a position to answer this by which river at bodh gaya is gautam buddh believed to have attained enlightenment and that is niranjana right now enlightenment bhi ho gayi ab what did he decided after this now after getting enlightened he decided to spend the rest of his life in preaching the truth he saw he delivered his first sermon his first um in the easiest of the word his first lecture at sarnath near banaras at the deer park jahan par inke panch disciples the and this event is now known as the dharma chakra parivartan that is he started the uh, the wheel of religion or हम कहते हैं धर्म का चक्र जो है उन्होंने शुरू कर लिया था और नेक्स्ट फोर्टी ईयर्स जो है बच्चे ही मूव्ड इन दी गंजाटिक वैली इन उत्तर प्रदेश एंड बिहार प्रीचिंग हिज मैसेज he also organized his disciples in great buddhist sang or order and endowed it with the rules and discipline right now is uh, now who were the rulers who patronized uh, buddhism but before that just have a look at the places uh, if i if you could just see here that uh, avanti uh, khosala vridji काशी मगध इनमें से मैं आपको दो रूलर्स का खास बताऊंगी एक तो आपके मगध के रूलर्स दे पैटर्नाइज बुद्धिज्म एक खोसाला के रूलर राइट मगध के दो इंपॉर्टेंट रूलर्स हैं बिंबी सार एंड अजत सात्रु राइट और खोसाला के हैं प्रसांजीत दे एक्चुअली पैटर्नाइज दी रिलीजन ऑफ बुद्धिज्म इसके अलावा बच्चे ही ऑल्सो विजिटेड कपिला वस्तु यहाँ पर बहुत सारे जो है डिस पीपल जो है दे बिकेम देयर डिसाइपल्स इंक्लूडिंग हिज ओन वाइफ यशोधरा एंड हिज सन राहुल बिसाइड दैट ही ऑल्सो विजिटेड काशी वाजी एंड अवंती राइट सो द नेक्स्ट is his last words he said now monks i have nothing more to tell you that all that is composed is liable to decay strive after salvation energetically that is what he said ke iske baad jo yahi kahega that whatever is in the world is liable to decay पतन होगा जो भी चीज़ यहाँ पर है इस दुनिया की लेकिन आपका परम जो आपका उद्देश्य है वो ये है कि सेल्वेशन या निर्वाण की जो है तरफ आपने देखना है सो वेरी क्विक वन बिफोर वी डू दी टीचिंग्स ना यू मस्ट वंडर दैट डू वी हैव टू लर्न सो मच देखो ये जितना भी हमने पार्ट किया है दिस विल फॉर्म द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ योर आंसर राइट सो पहला मैंने आपको बताया कि वॉट वर द कॉजेज ऑफ द राइज ऑफ द वे दे Uh, religion right uske baad we started with the life where gautam buddha's real name was siddharth he was born at lumbani in 567 bc he was the only son of sudodhan his mother's name was maya 
and he was married to Yashodra, a son named as Rahul was born to him. How many of you four scenes ki baat ki where he saw the old man, a sick man, a dead body, and an aesthetic. So, ye char scenes hai jino ne Gautam Buddh ke jeevan ko jo hai bohat zada prabhavit kiya. Right? Now, now is the great renunciation. The great renunciation is the event where he left his family and the palace and this happened in 533. He left his palace as a wandering monk in search of truth. Right? Then we talked about his uh, enlightenment. He got enlightened uh, near Bodh Gaya on the banks of river Niranjana under the peepal tree. Right? And this event, the great enlightenment is also called as the Tatkat, where the one who has attained the truth. And after this, he started the Dharma Chakra Parivartan, where he delivered his first sermon at Sarnath near Banaras at Diya Park. Right? And the two important uh, rulers who patronize Buddhism is the Prasanjit of Kosala, Bimbisar and Ajat Satru of Magad. He visited areas like Kashi, Vaji and Avanti. Right? Now, he died at the age of uh, 80 at Kushi Nagar in 487 BC. Now, the next part is the teachings, right? Now, here this is the tricky part because it comes to your mind that how do we learn so much? Dekho, aapko bache basically jo hai, uh, jo absolutely uh, essential features of Buddhism jo hai, that is the four noble truth, right? Then is the eightfold path, middle path, then is your uh, nirvan, karam, or morality. Ye paanch cheeze jo hai, that is absolute, absolutely essential teachings of Gautam Buddh. One, he talks about the four noble truth. Other, he talks about the eightfold path. Is baar mein aapko is video mein ek trick batai hai ke kaise aap ye eightfold path jo hai, wo learn kar sakte ho. Tisra, middle path. Chautha, nirvan. Paanchwa, karam. Aur chhema jo hai, morality. Iske lava bache, agla jo aap section yaad karoge, usko aise hai. One, he is silent about the existence of God, no faith in yagyas, uh, sacrifices, rituals, opposed caste system, no faith in the sanctity of Vedas in Sanskrit, no belief in doing penance and fasting. So, number one bache, before we go on to start with the teachings, let me just give you one, uh, the zest or the, sorry, zest uh, of this uh, teaching that what actually uh, were his uh, teachings. Dekho, agar mein do words unke teaching liye use karungi, simple and practical, they were absolutely free from any philosophical complexities and rituals, right? So, just unlike uh, Hindu religion at this uh, time, Buddhism did not have any complex philosophical complexities or rituals or Mahatma, uh, sorry, uh, Mahatma Buddha jo hai, he aimed at the moral upliftment of the people and his main aim was to attain nirvan that is freedom from the cycle of life and death he also laid emphasis on leading a simple and a pious life right so a first important teaching right now what is that four fundamental truth or the noble truth right now the first one kya hai? let me have my other uh, pointer which is something right now, sabse pehle kya bache, the world is full of sorrow and miseries. Or is sorrow, is miseries ka kar, karan kya hai? Trisna, desires or craving. So, one can free oneself from the sorrow by getting rid of the desires. And desires ko end kaise kare? By following the eightfold path. So, very quickly. Number one, world is full of sorrow and miseries. Ab ye sorrow and miseries ka chief cause kya hai? That is the trisna or the desire or craving, right? And one can free oneself from the sorrow and suffering by getting rid of the desires and this can be done by following the eightfold path, right? Now the eightfold path. Now this is uh, slightly difficult, but I will, I'm going to give you a way how to learn this. But let's first understand. 
Now, although, but in your book, it's in a different uh, serial order. Just to help you to learn it better, I've changed the order of these eightfold uh, path given by Buddhism. Number one is the right livelihood. Now, this means to adopt right means of livelihood. That means you have to earn your money by doing honest things. Then is right intention. That is to free from violence and desire. Ye bache kai bacho ke book mein ye right belief ke naam se bhi hogi, right? So you can call it as right intention, free from violence and desire. Then is right view. It means knowledge of all the four noble truth. Then is the right effort. Just hold on. Right effort. It means making right efforts to control evil thoughts and actions. Then is right speech. It means to be polite and truthful. Right concentration. It means to concentrate on the right things. Then is the right action. It means to do good things. Right mindfulness. It is vigilance through self-examination and self-study. Now, let me explain it to you in a very simple manner. Number one, right, right livelihood. That means to adopt honest means of earning one's living. Right intention, free from desire and violence. Right view, that means you have the knowledge of the four noble truth. That world is full of sorrow. The reason of the sorrow is the desire. Uh, if one can annihilate the desire, the sorrows can be reduced and these desires can be finished by following the eightfold path. That means you must have the knowledge of these four truths. Right? Effort means to make right effort to control any kind of evil thoughts or actions. Right speech to be polite and truthful. Right concentration means focus on positive, on right things. Right action means to do good things and mindfulness means introspection. Now, how to learn this? Dekho, right to pehle wala word sab mein hai. Aap ye dekho, livelihood ka L le liya mene. Intention ka mene I le liya. V or fir effort. So, this becomes life. Agla hai aapka speech ka S, concentration ka C, action ka A or M. So, you can use this word as life scam. Life, right livelihood, right intention, right view, right effort and scam is right speech, right concentration, right action and right mindfulness. So, this is how this can be learned. Then is the middle path. Dekho, middle path kya hoti hai, bache, agar mein aap se kahun ke you just study the entire day. Or I say, do not worry about your studies. Enjoy the entire day. Watch uh, Netflix and just have a chill day every day. I think this will be wrong because these are two extremes. Now, what does Buddhism say? That adopt a middle path between the two extremes. So, Buddha says that too much pleasure and comfort would not lead to happiness, nor will living in forest like an aesthetic without food and shelter or torturing one body, that will also not bring you happiness. So, the right way of living is the middle path between the, true, uh, between the two extremes. Now, by pursuing, by following the middle path, a person can attain nirvan, which is the highest goal of Buddhism. Ye nirvan chaba jo hai, it's been coming again and again. Let me explain it to you in my next slide. Now, what is nirvan? Now, Buddhism says that the highest goal of human life is to attain nirvan. So, what does nirvan mean? It literally means blowing out or extinction of craving or desires, right? And the ultimate cessation of suffering. It is positive blessedness and complete perfection. Basically, bache, nirvan means when you do, when you are free from any kind of desires, any kind of cravings, right? Which can ultimately lead to, you, to your rebirth. Ab yaha thodi si baat jo hai samajne wali hai. Where is my pointer? I just have it here. Okay. Now, in other religions, moksha, that is what is the counterpart, counter word for nirvan in Hinduism, that can be attained only after death. But in Buddhism, it is possible in this life and that can be attained by following eightfold path. Life scam, remember that word. 
then is karam now buddha recognized the law of karam law of karam means that what a man sows shall he reap so everybody must reap the fruits of his action this is the law of karam man is reborn due to his ego and desire and if you have good karmas you have done good deeds it will free you from the cycle of rebirth right then is the ethical code or morality right now this is also one of the most important uh, you know teachings of uh, buddha because he stresses on the morality morality means leading a moral life virtuous life now he gives too much of importance to this moral character now what are the important things he talk about speaking of truth uh love and benevolence uh obedience to parents respect to elders living the life of chastity abstaining from consuming any kind of intoxicating uh, drinks then is uh, charity kindness and mercy to the sick and to all the living beings dekho yahan tak jo aapke points hai na bache they are the essential features of buddhism four noble truth eight fold path middle path then is nirvan karam and morality now these are the five essential features or the essential teachings of buddhism the rest we will talk about what buddha has talked about the yagya sacrifices uh, god now this is also a very important uh, point here now what happened is that uh, buddha now he actually gave a lot of importance to the theory of karma so he did not play pay any attention uh, to the issue regarding the god maybe he did not want to complicate uh, buddhism so he hasn't talked about god ab bahut sare historians jo hain that means they kind of try to interpret that maybe he did not believe in god but that is not the truth he is silent about the existence of god he does not want to get into any kind of controversy is god there or not so he is silent about the existence of god now in his uh, book the milanda pano he says just as the wave of water creates another wave and finishes itself similarly karam is the cause of rebirth so karam not the soul or god is responsible for the rebirth ek water ki wave jo hai wo khud hi create hoti hai aur wave khud hi apne aap mein finish ho jati hai usi tarike se agar hamara rebirth ho raha hai uska reason jo hai karm hai not the soul or the god they are not responsible for your rebirth if you perform good deeds uh, you know you are not craving for anything you do not have your desires you will be free from the cycle of life and death now this is also very important now he clearly says that no faith in the yagya sacrifices and rituals in fact he condemned the performance of yagyas as useless and gave importance to life of high morality this is one thing he has given prime importance to to lead a high moral and a virtuous life then is he was also opposed to caste system now gautam buddha criticized caste system he did not believe in any kind of caste distinctions according to him all men are equal and the status of person that is he a high born or a low born is determined by his karmas not by his birth and you know maybe it it is this principle of buddha that all caste are equal and this became one of the reason that people Uh, followed buddhism in large number then is he did not have any faith in the divinity of vedas or the sanskrit he did not believe that vedas as the divine knowledge or uh, sanskrit as the divine language in fact he did not give any importance to chanting of the vedic hymns in fact he gave his sermons he addressed people in their local language that is pali even the early buddhist text were written in pali right then is no belief in penance and fasting maine aapko is video lecture ke shuru mein hi kaha tha ki for 6 years he was in the in the jungles of arvela and he he performed a lot of hard penance he actually stopped eating food but it is there he realized that there is no use going to forest for meditation fasting hard penance nirvan can be attained 
only by leading a life of high morality and following the Ashta Marg or the Eightfold Path. Right? So, if I have to conclude one thing, the teachings of Buddhism were simple and practical, there was no philosophy, no complexity, then the virtuous path is most important in terms of the teachings of uh, Buddhism. So, Gautam Buddha taught the court of practical ethics and laid down the democratic principle of the social equality. Now, Buddha asked his disciples to judge everything on the scale of reason. So, this is what is all about the life of Gautam Buddha and his teachings. So, I'm sure that the topic is now clear to you. Now, what is your work? Please listen to this video carefully, go back to your books, read your textbook or whatever book you have. Uh, I'm sure that after this video and reading your textbook, things will be much more clearer and you can make your notes accordingly. Uh, thank you so much for watching this uh, video in case you have any kind of queries or uh, any kind of you know questions that you can ask um, you know you can comment uh, you can put your questions in the comment box I will be waiting for your response and all the best for your exams and thank you so much for watching this video.